Bogey Wheels, Devin here. I've been having a lot of fun in the last week or so building my very own waste oil shop heater here. Um, I'm going to start it up for you guys. I'm going to show you what it's made of, how I put it together, and we're going to see how hot we can get it going and how quick. First and foremost, the expansion chamber is an old uh, 20 or so gallon uh, air compressor tank. Got it for 30 bucks off Kijiji. Second, we have um, just a that's a four and a half inch diameter steel pipe that I made Swiss cheese out of. Um, that I got for free, salvaged out of a uh, junkyard. Um, did need to buy a drill press to uh, make the Swiss cheese out of it. Cost me a little bit, but don't worry about that. And finally, a brake rotor at the bottom to uh, as the cap that goes over top of my burning pot and that was just handed to me from a family member so all in all parts 30 bucks for the uh, the compressor tank and I think it was about 10 bucks for the uh, the high heat paint not too bad also these legs were uh, one inch square steel tubing that was just laying around so here's a shot of the base and the uh, the burn chamber pot that I'm using you can see it's had some heat run through it already Stainless steel should be able to withstand as much heat as you can put out. Brake rotor welded onto my uh, my Swiss cheese tube. I'm going to start calling it that. And to um, make the connector for my elbow to go up into the flue, I just I just bent a steel band, welded it together to make a to make a ring out of it, and then welded it in place. That was pretty easy. Now for the fuel source, I've got uh, 5 16 copper wire attached to a bucket with some waste oil in it. The same bucket I showed you from uh, my previous uh, waste oil ad adaptation video from my old Coleman stove. Just um, going down a half inch inner diameter piece of steel pipe into the bottom there. I used to have an elbow here with a bit of a, um, a flare at the end for to act like a funnel. But I found it, it gave it more of a, a flu effect and it started to draw air out rather than suck air in, which is what we need from anything on this end of the, uh, the combustion chamber. Another issue I had is I put this close to the center so I would have it sticking out underneath um, in the middle of the burn and that's where I figured I'd get it more efficient and I had it sticking out another three or four inches deep inside there. Um, what happened was being in the center of the burn in the hottest part it started cooking the oil inside the tubing and I was getting a lot of smoke coming out of the tube so I cut down the top a bit and I cut down I can't really see it there but I cut it down pretty much to the very bottom of the uh, brake rotor here so there's not going to be much more cooking off on the inside this has been fun this has been a nice little expi uh, science experiment for me um, it's fun to uh, adjust things and figure out what you need to do to make it burn more completely and more efficiently so filing my tube up there's my pail of waste oil about halfway full I still have the original setup um, going into the garden hose valve and a little viewport that I don't really use anymore um, I'm going to change this out change this over to a different uh, piece that connects better to this thread and I'm just gonna get rid of this altogether because I don't use it and frankly sometimes as you can see here by how dark it is and that little drip stuff tends to leak okay enough chit chat let's get into the fun stuff here time to light it so you just pull your stainless steel pot out and I've got a kettle of black coffee all ready to go it's actually diesel and waste oil. You just dump a little bit in there. You don't need much. Just get a thin, thin layer of it on the bottom. No, you just need a propane torch. Touch on the bottom for a quick moment. Get it started. Slide it under your little combustion chamber. And now. I'm going to give it 
where I know is enough drip to get enough uh, oil started quick enough. And at the same time, I'm going to be busting out my, my timer here from the moment we started, which was just about 10 seconds ago. I'm going to keep an eye on how long it takes to get this thing real hot. Of course, I've got my welding gloves for moving stuff around when it gets really hot. You do not want to be touching that with your hands. So right now it's just the diesel and waste oil burning that I tossed in there originally. It takes a little while with my setup for the uh, waste oil to make it all the way down the tube and in. I've got a solution for that uh, coming up. I'm going to be putting a needle valve closer to the entrance, like really close, so as soon as I make an adjustment the results will be almost instant. Oh, there I can. This might be tough to see in the film here, but I can see it pouring oil out of the. Uh, you see a little bit of oil in that bottom left-ish porthole. Okay, yeah, the needle valve closer to my burn chamber will make my adjustments uh, react a lot quicker. So, I'm going to wait and check on how things are doing in just a couple minutes. Okay, it's been just over four minutes now. In the first couple of minutes of starting this thing... Oh, wait, I'll show you on my timer here. Four and a half minutes, there we go. The first little while just needs to get the uh, combustion pot hot enough to start vaporizing the oil. And that's when you can start really putting some heat on it's burning from the surface of the oil right now and uh, when it really starts to get hot and the oil starts to bubble up inside there the vapors are what ignites and that burns a lot hotter and a lot more completely through here so it's warming up just before the point where it's too hot to put my hand on I've got a uh, thermometer here 116 Fahrenheit 46 Celsius so not that hot yet. Top of my elbow is 74 Celsius and 166 Fahrenheit. You welcome uh, my American viewers for uh, doing the whole Fahrenheit thing. A lot of people only choose one degree. Let's check out the flue now, or sorry, the chimney. See right there, nothing but a bit of heat haze. It's burning very clean right now. the new sled. So here's what I'm going to do now to start ramping up the heat real good. I'm going to start introducing a lot more air. The way I found out doing that best is to, whoop, there it goes, is to pull the pot out slightly off to the side so it's sort of just past the edge of the brake drum, or the brake uh, rotor. You don't want it too, uh, too far out because somehow that leads to less complete combustion. There we go. I'm using a, just a piece of steel on the outside there as a shim because it doesn't butt up perfectly to my brake rotor. See there's a bit of play, but I'll fix that later. So if you can hear that now, I'll shut up for a second. Now it's starting to really roar. And now I can feel more heat being put off, so... I've been filming continuously since my last temperature check. Let's see where we're at now. 74 Celsius. 169, not a huge difference yet. We're getting there though. 122 Celsius, 258 on the elbow. The center of my canister here, 71 and 164. The top of my brake rotor, this is where it gets real hot. 
155 Celsius and one, or sorry, 312 Fahrenheit. And that's at the seven uh, minute 45 second mark. Check it again in two minutes. Okay, we're just under 11 minutes now. Let's check our temperatures. Two of six Celsius and four oh four Fahrenheit. I can feel some good heat reading off this thing. The inside of my elbow is two seventy four and five hundred twenty five Fahrenheit. Center of my tank one ninety. No, up to two hundred now Celsius. I'm climbing pretty good, so that's about four hundred. And my pot is two thirty and four forty nine Fahrenheit. Now. When I open up the side the way I'm doing here, it causes air to flow pretty quickly in through this end. So you end up with a bit of flame outs on this side because you're having such a you're getting such a crosswind. And I'm not a huge fan of that because it does put a little bit of smoke off onto the inside here, just a little bit. Oftentimes that smoke gets sucked right back in through my Swiss cheese. But I don't want to have this thing emitting any smoke whatsoever when I'm inside my shop in the winter. I'm getting really warm right now sitting next to this thing. And the cool part, the fun part to look at is if this will focus, when you look through the crease of my burn chamber there, it's just a swirling mass of hell burning away in there. It's all the uh, the oil vapors burning up. I'm very angry in there right now. Pretty fun to look at. So as for actual heat, um, heat that I'm feeling here in the room right now, it's it's a lot of radi radiating heat. And uh, when I back up from a distance, I can sort of feel it on the back of my hand putting its heat off. What I prefer a lot is, is convection heat, the kind of heat that draws air up and circulates it through the room. That makes for a warmer everywhere in the room. but. I probably can't do that without building some sort of casing around it. Similar to how my Coleman is set up. See, it's got its a burn chamber, which is a cylinder on the inside, and it's got the casing on the outside. And it just draws uh, air up through there. So, what time are we at now? We're at 13 and a half minutes. Let's do a temperature check. And we'll check the chimney for smoke. So 282 Celsius and 541 Fahrenheit. I don't think I'd want it much hotter than that if I was actually spending time in here. 311 Celsius and 591. Center of the tank. 275 and 527. No wonder I'm warm. Top of my brake drum, or brake uh, rotor. Three forty-eight Celsius and six fifty-nine Fahrenheit. I'm not gonna have a cold winter. Okay, wandering back out to the chimney. And mostly heat haze. With the odd little bit of smoke coming out there. And that's what happens when you start dumping in air a whole bunch of it at a time. It does make a little more smoke. If I just uh shove that burn pot in there a little bit tighter up to the brake rotor we'd start burning right and clean, good and clean again there's the new drill press, got it used so glad I finally got one of those can you imagine doing all those holes by hand? Okay, maybe it's time to tone it down a little. A little bit of smoke's getting out. All right, we're at 17 and a half minutes now. I'm as warm as I ever want to be. Um, I pushed the burn chamber in just a little tighter up to the uh, plate, and so those little crosswind puffs of smoke I was mentioning, those stop happening. Always a good idea to have a smoke alarm and a CO detector inside your garage, no matter what you're doing. 
A um, little bit of smoke from this, not a huge deal. It's the CO, the carbon monoxide that you got to watch out for. Safety first. So, still putting out a bunch of heat. Let's find out what. The top 312 Celsius and 595. My elbow. I always like checking the top of the elbow. It always gets usually hotter. No, not, not anymore. 288, 552. Side of the chamber is 291 and 553. Top of my brake rotor, 344 and 652. That's a fun number. Back to the chimney for one last peek. Now that I've dialed it down just a little bit. Should be nice and clear. And it is. Nothing but a little bit of heat haze coming out of that thing. I love how you can take such dirty oil and burn so cleanly with it and put off so much heat. Best of all, my friends love me because I do free oil changes. And I love them because that oil heats my shop all winter. Oh, and as for the smoke alarm going off earlier, it's worth mentioning that some of the paint from uh, even though it's high heat paint, it's still vaporizing from the heat cooking off from the original painting, both on the elbow, which happens with this material, and the actual chamber. So, heck, that could have been what put it off anyway. So, anyways, thanks for watching Bogey Wheels. Make sure to check out our friends JPR Performance and subscribe if you're a big fan of this sort of thing. Be getting back to the power sports part of bogey wheels soon enough. Hoping for snow. You're watching bogey wheels.